This video is brought to you by NCIX.com. Great technology, selection and service. Hey, hello everyone, this is Dimitri with Hardware Canucks and it's been almost two years since the launch of AMD's Hawaii GPU and we've been patiently waiting to see how and what AMD will come back with as recent launch of NVIDIA 980 Ti really sparked consumer interest in what's been in development at AMD. While this new generation of graphics cards is nothing short of revolutionary for the GPU market, because the first round of HBM 1.0 or high bandwidth memory will pave the way of how memory interface is built uh, moving forward. So without any further ado, let me introduce to you the AMD R9 Fury X, featuring their new Fiji XT HBM GPU. <laughs> Now there's a lot to cover with the Fury X and I'm truly excited to see AMD get ahead of the game with mass produced graphics units with HPM. So first things first, let's get the specs out of the way. The R9 Fury X still utilizes the 28 nanometer manufacturing process. We have 4096 stream processors, 64 ROPs, 256 texture units. The core is clocked up to 1050 megahertz. It has four gigabytes of HBM memory clocked at uh, 1000 megahertz on a gigantic 4096 bit memory bus bring memory bandwidth to 512 gigabytes per second. Uh, AMD has done a lot of work with power improvements as well on the Fiji XT core that hits a TDP of 275 watts. This is important because the power envelope is identical to their 390X and actually uh, lower than the 290X but is significantly more powerful than those two cards. And now the last piece of the puzzle, the price. It is released at $649, which means it'll compete directly with Nvidia's flagship GTX 980 Ti. And we really just hope that availability is there, but the Fury X should level the playing field or at least allow AMD uh, market share to go higher. AMD will be releasing several variations of the card. We have the water-cooled Fury X, air-cooled Fury, and a true small form factor card the r9 nano which is the length of the pci slot so make sure you subscribe to be notified when our reviews of those come out but for now let's focus our attention on the fury x so first of all amd's design team has done a fantastic job with making sure the card looks and feels unique Everything from the soft touch dotted texture on the side that can be removed by the user by the way and replaced with something you 3D print yourself which is pretty cool with more soft touch plates all around the backlit Radeon text on each side to properly reveal regardless of orientation. AMD included a load indicator above the two 8-pin power connections to show GPU load. The color can also be switched from red to blue or a mix between the two for this sort of purple tone. The tubing is threaded. We are told the idea here was to match threading on many power supplies, but I wish it was just plain black tubing like on their 295X2. And the size of the Fury X is also impressively compact. This will redefine how we think uh, of enthusiast small form factor PCs. But keep in mind, even though it's only seven and a half inches in length, because the tubing exits through the back, it kind of lengthens the car to about nine inches uh, for realistic sizes. The main reason for this board size reduction is HBM. And here's a size comparison to Fury X on top and the 290X at the bottom. AMD is able to achieve a reduction of up to 65% in size because the memory is no longer spread on the board around the GPU, but it is now uh, stacked on the GPU die. And so the way this works is we have an interposer. Think of it as a silicon motherboard where the memory is stacked on a logic die, almost like floors of a building. And this proximity of DRAM cores improves bus width bandwidth and power efficiency compared to GDDR5 memory structure. And check out the actual size comparison between the one gigabyte HPM to GDDR5. So this is really impressive size reduction.
The 120mm radiator is a little unconventional because of extra reservoir space underneath that holds more liquid, but it may limit mounting options in tight cases and potentially interfere with other components in your system. So here I mounted the Fury X inside my favorite ITX case, the N-Case M1, that fits it just fine, but the tubing isn't as flexible and could introduce challenges. And because the fan is placed in front of the radiator, the most ideal mounting location here is at the rear for proper exhaust. And if you're thinking of mounting at the front, it may not work in many builds as you usually want the front to intake air. AMD's choice of fan here is nothing short of perfect. This Gentle Typhoon is one of the best radiator fans with high static pressure and low noise. Plus notice the added circular support on the blades to prevent vibrations. For display connectivity, the Fury X sports three DisplayPort 1.2 and HDMI 1.4. And given the attractive nature of this card for an HTPC, it's really confusing to see the lack of HDMI 2.0. Although we are told that an adapter will be made available later this summer. And so the Fury X is a feature loaded GPU taking advantage of upcoming DX12 support to drastically reduce API overhead that promises to utilize available CPU and GPU resources. And if you want to read up more in depth on these exciting DX12 features, I'll leave a link in the description below uh, to our article and I would highly recommend you check it out. So now on to the best part, the part you've all been waiting for, let's talk performance. Starting with 1440p benchmarks, there's a clear neck-to-neck -neck arms race between the two flagship cards. The Fury X is either one frame above or below the 980 Ti. However, this picture changes a little bit once we look at The Witcher 3, with Fury X losing to keep up, and to our surprise, a similar result for BF4, and all these other games where the Fury X is just below the competitor's flagship. This is most likely due to driver optimization, and we really hope to see more performance squeezed out with more mature drivers. But it is when we look at 4K gaming, the gap between the two cards uh, closes, and performance of HBM truly shines at this resolution. Even if it's just 4GB compared to GDDR5, 6GB on the TI, and 12GB on the Titan X. It wins some, it loses some, but the important thing to notice is just how much faster the new Fiji architecture is compared to AMD's previous Hawaii. Temperatures at low, they're very impressive, hitting just 50 degrees Celsius. Uh, that water cooling unit is doing an amazing job and we are really interested in seeing how the air-cooled Fury will perform. So leave us a like if you'd want to see the Fury X uh, compared to the Fury. Despite this being a water-cooled card though, we've noticed GPU whine and audible pump noise for the card, making this one of the louder GPUs in our stack. Placing it inside the case though mutes the whine, but here it is, take a listen. Now we've brought this up to AMD and they are aware of this issue on the pump and changes have been already applied to production parts and we hope to have an even quieter acoustic profile for the consumer versions of Fury X. Next is power consumption and AMD has been really hard at work to reduce the power draw and thanks to power efficiency of HBM and other architectural changes, you are looking at a more efficient GPU that is comparable to Maxwell's top of the line. And with that said, there's very little room for overclocking, unfortunately, about 10% at best on the core, and memory overclocking is practically unavailable. But given the impressive bandwidth of HPM, you simply don't need to overclock your memory. And so this is it. The R9 Fury X is the first mass-produced GPU to feature HBM, and I think AMD has done an outstanding job with the physical aspects of the card, the full feature set of DX12 support, power consumption is now under control compared to Hawaii, it runs cool and quiet, and most importantly, it fits right in line to compete against the 980 Ti. This was an important element to get right with this release, and I really think that they did. Now a few hiccups uh, to point out are noticeable GPU whine and the pump isn't as silent as perhaps you'd want. HDMI 2.0 is missing which makes no sense 
and overclocking is limited and we were hoping to push the core past the 1050 megahertz just because we have so much cooling headroom. But here's a product that is pushing innovation forward with HPM and we're giving the R9 Fury X a damn good and a damn good innovative award.